Most of us have had to do some lawn work, either as a result of parents telling to us to, or looming fines from a neighborhood association. Since day one, gardening has been a big part of my life, either walking with my mom and her pointing out different types of plants to me, or gardening by her side, pulling weeds and starting hydroponic tables. Because of this, it has shaped who I am today, and it sits very close to my heart. At my school, I run a gardening club where I get to expose this to other people my age who might not have gotten to before. Something that we do is we built raised beds outside of our school. And right next to that is a pollinator garden that our school did as a project. This was built because, as some of you may know, bees and other pollinators, such as bats, birds, wasps, and butterflies are wa rapidly decreasing in population. In a study done by the USDA in 2018, 32% of Ohio bee colonies were lost. This is a major problem, and a big part of this is habitat destruction. According to the Sierra Club, habitat destruction has played a big role in how our bees are being affected. Sure, there are other strange diseases and colony collapse, but this wouldn't have been so widespread and it would have been much easier to bounce back from if habitat destruction wasn't so widely spread. When you think of habitat destruction, you may think of leveling a forest to make a business park, but there's more to it than that. At its core, habitat destruction is the destruction of an ecosystem and its balance. We as humans are extremely guilty of this. For example, you might have heard of the American ideal. The big house, the two and a half kids, the green lawn, and the white picket fence. But that green lawn is far more sinister than it may appear. That lawn, along with the simple fact that to have those lawns, you have to clear more land, the gardens that accompany it and what we do can really affect that. For example, some of you might have heard of a, an invasive species called honeysuckle. It is a big problem here in Dayton and was originally brought over so that way it would be easy gardening because it thrives so much. But in our climate, it thrives too much and has taken over to the point that our native spice bush is pretty much completely demolished and endangered. Along with the gardens is what we take away from it. We take away these weeds, weeds that are actually pioneer plants that break down rocks and help fertilize soil. We also take away our grass clippings and our rotting wood, which are habitats for bugs and small animals, as well as help replenish the soil of its nutrients. We do all of this for useless plots of land that originated as English aristocrats being able to say, I can have this and not do anything with it. We put all of our time, our commitment, and our resources towards this. In a study done by NASA, in the West, approximately 400 bottles of water per lawn per day was used to maintain grass because it's just not native there or suited for the climate. And then to replace everything that we remove, we use things like fertilizer. Fertilizer that oftentimes has nitrous oxide bases, which is bad for the environment. And then we use weed killer and we start the cycle all over again until we are spending thousands of dollars on these chemicals that are bad for the environment. So I ask you to take a closer look at what you put in your lawn, what you do to it, are the plants you're going to plant native? Are they pollinator plants? How suited are they for this climate? Or you can also do research what you can do locally. For example, a local organization every single year has a native plant sale that you can go to to not only support our local parks, but get some very beautiful plants. But above all, I ask you to vote. I know this seems weird and out of the blue, but a time where the EPA's laws are being stripped and big companies have more power than ever in our government, I ask you to go to the polls. And not just your primary, primaries and your presidential and all of that, I ask you to go to your state and your local elections too. 
Neighborhood associations are a big reason I can't tell you to go rip up your lawns and have fun because you'll get fined hundreds, if not thousands of dollars for being an eyesore. So I ask you, please, stay aware, stay educated, and vote for the health of your planet. Thank you.